up, everyone? How you doing? Colin Egglesfield here. Welcome to another episode of Coffee with Colin. This is a very special edition because this is the season finale of season four. And if you didn't notice behind me, we're actually shooting at the Hollywire Studios here in Los Angeles, California. So this is a great opportunity for you guys to get a little taste of Hollywood while we're out here. And uh, I'm actually out here prepping on a couple of projects that I'm working on. I'm going to be heading out to uh, shoot my next film, so super excited about that. But uh, tonight, we are going to get into it again. We've been off for a few weeks just because I've been doing a little bit of traveling. But now that we are back, I am super excited to share with you tonight a special guest who's a very hunky dude. And uh, this guy, you have seen him on a ton of TV shows and films. And uh, you can see him on one of my favorite shows, Shit's Creek. He's been on Ransom, The Bull Type, NBC's Taken. He's also been on Open Heart. I mean, this guy's resume just reads like, I mean, a Rolodex of amazing shows. And uh, he's also been on the Hallmark hit TV show, Wind Calls the Hearts. I've already had your favorite dudes from that show, Daniel Lissing and uh, Kevin Smith. And uh, we're going to just finish it off with the trifecta here with another amazing, awesome dude from uh, Wind Calls the Heart. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Mr. Kevin McGarry. Hello. Hello. That's that's a very nice intro. I think that might have been the nicest intro I've ever had <laughs> in my life. I was just sitting backstage, just um, really enjoying that. So, just uh, relishing in the if you, you can throw me back there if you want and just say more nice things about yeah, me. Well, I don't really know how this goes, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is live, but you could just go back on YouTube and watch this whenever you want. Yeah. And, okay. You know, <laughs> Put me to sleep every, every night. Need, yeah. Need a little exactly. confidence boost. Just jump on here. That's what I always do. But, <laughs> Um, anyway, thanks for joining us. Uh, great to see you. You look like uh, you're in your summer finest. Where are you at? I am. Well, I mean, we were just outside. It's a beautiful. I'm, I'm in. I'm in Vancouver right now. We're about to start uh, season ten of One Calls the Heart, season ten, which is insane. Um, and it's a, uh, it's just a gorgeous day in Vancouver. So we were kind of out on a bit of a bike ride, and I thought, nice. I thought this was a summery shirt, and I, I'd give it a, you know, I'd give it a whirl. I don't wear a lot of Hawaiian, but I think. Today yeah, was the day. you look good in it, man. I think you oh, should. Thanks, man. More of it. Thanks, buddy. Um, you're a handsome. <laughs> guy. Did you? Uh, how did you get started in acting? Did you do the the route that I went through through like the whole fashion Zoolander modeling thing, or? Well, I, I mean, I got a really good filter. First of all, I mean, you can't see the real me behind <laughs> this. Uh, no, honestly, I I um I did it through theater. Um, I uh, you know I grew up in a small town. So There's like. 5,000 people in that town. It was kind of like a uh, Springfield from the Simpsons. Um, Where, where'd you grow it's up? It's called King Garden is what it's called. Uh, King Garden, Ontario, um, right on Lake Huron, kind of across from Michigan. Um, and small town, nuclear power plant. Everybody's kind of dad or mom worked at the power plant. And the idea was like, you know, you can get a great job there and kind of have a lovely life and kind of stay in this town. And I was like, I just didn't want to do it. I kind of wanted to see the world. Um, and I knew I really liked, like, attention. So I was like, well, maybe <laughs> acting. My, I, you know, and I, in, in high school, I did a bunch of the plays. And, you know, I, I ended up falling into a drama class. And, like, I think I got out of, I left, like, my math class or something. Instead of going back, because I didn't want to, I, I wasn't getting it. And I wandered into the drama class in grade nine. And I was like, wait, this is, like, we can get credit for this? Like, I can graduate on acting kind of like a fool um and drama was and, considered like okay because in, in my high school it was either you were either in sports or you were in drama and if you were in drama you were a little light in the loafers so to speak so well <laughs> it's funny you say that. And i remember like i school. played i played sports and i remember so this was after I, I i had already kind of been in 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 the in the drama program for a little bit and it was like grade 11 or something and i was on my school didn't have a lot of money, so it was. We had a rugby team. We didn't have football. So I was on the rugby team, and we were on this bus about to go play another, you know, school about half an hour away. And I, there was like a last minute rehearsal for like a, a checkoff play that we were doing, and I was at the back of the bus, and I had to make the decision to like either stay on the bus and go to the rugby uh, match 
or get up from the back of the bus and be like ridiculed. Like, and I got to go all the way to the front of the bus and walk off. Uh, and that's what I chose. And I was like, oh, I think maybe this might be what I want to do. And then I remember, you know, talking to my guidance counselor and be like, I think I want to be like an actor. And they're like, uh, okay. Uh, so like, the, you know, they, yeah, they pulled a book off to kind of like, see where they can send people who want to be an actor and like, like blow the dust off of it and open it up. And they're like, well, there's a couple of theater schools here. And so I ended up getting into a theater school and, uh, and then I was like, yeah, I want to be like a theater artist. That's what I want to be. And, and in, in Canada and Ontario has kind of the, the major theater festivals in North America. And actually like I'd say America, the, there's a theater festival in Stratford, Ontario. That's I think the largest uh, Shakespeare Festival in North America. It's kind of mm -hmm. renowned. Al Alec Guinness was the one that uh, uh, starred as Richard III back in like the 50s or whenever it started. Um, who played Obi-Wan Kenobi for anybody that, yes. anyway, Star Wars reference. Um, Obi-Wan. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I kind of stayed in that area. I got a job at a, at a festival in Niagara-on-the-Lake, which was uh, the Shaw, Bernard Shaw Festival. I did some rep theater for a while. And then, you know, I was just kind of pushing the the film and TV stuff away. I was like, I don't really want to do it. I did model for a hot second, uh, you know, and I was just trying to pay bills or whatever. And I'm, I'm I was a terrible server. I, I'd be fired. I say all the time, I, you know, I get hired on charm and fired on um, incompetence. <laughs> and that was basically, you know, every, every restaurant job I had, but I got scouted at one of these restaurant things and I did a little bit of, you know, some of the modeling stuff. I had this opportunity to go to Germany and I was like, I don't want to be a model. I want to, I want to, you know, I want to do the, the acting thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so then I stayed and grinded and did some theater and then I ended up getting a break. And you mentioned that open heart. That was kind of the first time I got hired as like a regular. And it was like an acting school, basically. Um, it's by the, it was by the same company, Epitome Pictures, that does like Degrassi, which is, you know, the Canadian yeah. show. Um, Claire Danes, was it? Claire, oh, oh no, you're thinking Homeland. Well, she, I think she was on Degrassi, or, and wasn't Jared Leto on there as well? Or I may be no. completely like, you, you know, I, we're not, that, I mean, the, the most famous was Drake, the singer. Yeah. He was on it. Um, maybe Jared, like maybe they did a walkthrough, but they weren't like, they weren't on it. Um, Kevin Smith came and directed an episode. It was like, it was teen. It has a huge fan base, and um, my so anyways, they were, That's what it was. That's they, what, yeah. No, my so-called life. That's what it was. Yeah, anyway, but then anyway, maybe maybe they did background work there. We don't know. We got to go back and check. Perhaps. Claire Danes might have been like the woman in line for Sloppy Joe's. I don't know. She. <laughs> it could have been her first thing. Um. But thank you, Nadine, for that. And anyone else, if you have questions for Kevin or myself, feel free to type them in the chat, and we hopefully hopefully we'll be able to get to them. Uh, continue, Kevin. Sorry. Yeah. So, anyways, did the thing. Um, they started. They wanted to kind of branch out and do a new show, so they ended up. They had another warehouse that they converted into a hospital, and did. Uh, you know, we we made this show. We only did one season, but it, whatever. It was you know, twelve episodes, and it was just kind of like. You know, there, there it, was, it was about three tiers. You know, there was like the main doctors, the residents, and then like the kind of the, the younger kids that were um, volunteers. And there was like a mystery and the hospital was keeping a secret and blah, blah, blah. Anyways, it was really fun. I met a lot of great people. And a lot of those people went on to like big successes. Uh, my friend Tori's on NCIS right now. My buddy Mina was Aladdin, Disney's Aladdin. And my buddy Patrick's doing Star Trek right now. So like, I mean, it was just a great... Yeah, I, I, it, it was a great learning experience too because we were all just kind of it was, it was everybody's kind of first big thing. So, yeah. how old were you at that time? Uh, Fifty-two, I think. 52, yeah. No, uh, I twenty-eight or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Late twenties. When you started to like get into this, were your parents supportive of this? Was your family like, "Yeah, Kevin, go for it." Or were they like, you're crazy, you're nuts, you need to go be an accountant to do something safe? Like, Well, my, my brother's an accountant, so. <laughs> um, <laughs> but they um, they definitely like pushed that down a little bit. Um, I think they wanted to sometimes be like, are you sure? You know, this is, ultimately it was kind of like, you know, their ignorance that, that 
to to a to a career in the arts gave them the confidence that I could do it. Like I, I don't think they knew how hard it was or, or even how to do it. So they're just like, okay, yeah, go go give it a shot. Um, things didn't happen for me quick, you know, like sometimes you get it at school or whatever and like people just hit it or whatever. Like I had to really kind of pay dues for a little while. Um, so that was kind of, they're like, are you sure you want to kind of keep going? Maybe you could do something else. And I was like, nah, I don't know. Um, so they were, they've always been supportive, of course. But uh, yeah, I would say the fact that they just, you know, didn't really know every, didn't know how hard it actually was, was beneficial for me. Yeah, I think ignorance is bliss, especially yeah. when I first started getting into this business, no idea what I was getting into. And yeah. sometimes I look back and be like, would I do this again if I knew exactly what it really took? And, and would you? Answer is always yes, but I always yeah. sometimes like after a while, after I haven't booked a job in a while, I haven't worked in a bit, I always do question like, man, I'm just, you know, but it's this business, what it's taught me is to be, you know, you got to learn how to be resilient. You got to learn how to uh, be able to take criticism, rejection. You got to learn how to just turn off those negative thoughts and just keep focusing on what is inspiring about this business because, I've tried a bunch of different things and nothing compares to the excitement and the, uh, the adrenaline rush that it's like when you're on set about to shoot. And yeah. uh, that's been the biggest motivating factor for me to do this business. Um, if someone were to ask you, what is it about acting that you love the most? What would you say? Well, I was actually going to ask you what, what, what the adrenaline was for you. Cause I was like, for me, whether whether it is it's TV film or, or theater, it's I, I always like being part of an ensemble. Like I like I like the fact that we're all kind of you know here to to make something. I, I like being part of a team, you know. And I, I I'm always learning whether not just like acting style, but I mean crew stuff. Like what some people do, I'm still learning half the time. Like why that guy's standing there holding that thing, or you know, like an IATSE thing in in the theater show. It's you're just a small part of what's kind of going on, you know? And that's why I don't think, you know, actors, you can sell a movie on an actor, but I think like what makes or breaks the movie is the, is the team, right? Like you, you come together and a lot of things have got to go right for it, for, you know, to really kind of take off. Yeah. Um, but I've always felt like, I, I just like, I, I like the collaboration, you know, like I, I, I love even, I remember auditions, you know, especially with theater, you would go in with a monologue, I hated it because I'm just standing here like, you know, kind of flagellation, like just by myself. Um, mm -hmm. I'd rather, you know, do do a scene or whatever and see what happens because there's something, the thing that gives me adrenaline or excites me is when something happens that's unexpected, you know, when when you're both in it and, and, and somebody throws you a curveball and you don't, you don't stop, right? Like it's just, mm -hmm. and it takes many years of practice to, to be in such a place of confidence and 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 focus like you said um but that's what makes me want to keep doing things you know and, and working with people too like the more i'm in this it's it's about really the people that you're like i really want to work with this person i really want to do this because i hear i hope the projects always are great but yeah. you know it's it's the people at the end of the day that i feel like i'm learning not only as an actor but as a, as a human being too so i don't know what what's your adrenaline what what fires you up what I love about it is that once the camera starts rolling, it's uh, it's almost like I kind of equate it to like walking out under a high wire where you practice and it's like balancing on that, that wire where you got to be completely present, but you've got to trust the work that you put into it. But then once the camera start rolling, it's kind of anything goes. And growing up, I think I was more of a perfectionist and always was focused on trying to do it right and have the right answer. Mm -hmm. And acting has taught me to let go of that and just kind of be in the moment. And that's one of the greatest benefits I would say acting has given to me is that practice of just letting go and just, yeah. just kind of letting it be what it is. Cause when you audition and you rehearse it, you think you may have it one way in your head the night before in the bathroom, before you go for the audition. Yeah, yeah, yeah morning you walk in and it can be completely different and the first few times I started to audition I was just like 
you know, you're just like holding on white knuckling, trying to make sure and you walk out of the audition, like, God, like that did not go any way the way yeah, yeah. I was hoping it would you go. You just black, you black out. You're black like, what out happened in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I was reading back And they're like, yeah, they loved you. And I was like, I don't even know what I did. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Please ask me to do it again. Um, yeah, and, and you know, you're talking about two very different things, which took a long time too. Like there are some people that are great auditioners and then you get to set and it, it's it, like, they're two very different skills. Um, without a doubt, you know, with an audition, you do have, there there is some sense of, of, of play and freedom and, and, and being surprised. But, you know, you, you read the breakdown, you see what they're looking for, you're making a choice. And then, you know, back when we were in rooms, you're watching somebody kind of do it the same way that you're doing it. And you're like, oh, do, do I change it now? Even though I wanted to do it that way, like just trying to get the job. And that's fine because it's auditioning is not act. It's, it's a completely different yeah. and important. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you need to get the job. But then once you start working, it's like you said, there's no right answer. Like you really just, you can do whatever you want in the bathroom, you know, say your lines, you're in the bathroom of the hotel or whatever. And then you show up the next day and your partner's feeding you something that you're not prepared for. And if you're doing whatever you plan for in the bathroom, it just looks like, yeah, you know, it, it doesn't look organic. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's funny because you said, you know, you like to be a perfectionist. I was the other way. I liked, like, that's why going back to that math story, you know, if the answer was three, I hated it. But <laughs> if I could, in English, if I could talk you into the reason what my answer is, whatever, I usually did pretty well in those, in those kind of okay. um, you know, subject. So I always had a little bit of that, just like, I don't know, we're going to see what happens. Yeah. And, 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 you know, worst case scenario is just take two. If it doesn't work, like you've got the it, cameras digital yeah. now, what is it? It doesn't cost anybody any more money to use film, uh, you know, we're not filming it. So, and again, yeah. you started in theater and there is no take two and no. it's a roll with it. And, you know, no. I, I did, uh, I mentioned this story before I, when I was training in New York city, I joined a uh, off-Broadway theater group down in Tribeca, and we did wow. A Few Good Men, where I played the Tom Cruise, Daniel Caffey role. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, in, in, um, I'm, I'm uh, doing my, my little inquisition interrogation of uh, the Kiefer Sutherland character in the film. And there's three lines of questioning, and I, I asked the first line of questioning, and I accidentally went to the third line of questioning, and his face faced the audience, and I was facing him. And when I asked him the third line of questioning, when it should have been the second, he was like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, you could just yeah. tell the in his face, like, that's not the right line. <laughs> like, oh, right. shit. But with theater, like, you find a way to make it back to it. But it's those moments that bring you, that snap you into the present moment. And yeah. the audience never knew. Um, yeah, of course. Of course. Really made yeah. the, the performance, you know, much better because it was just – it. After that, it was like, oh, shit, we got to figure this out. Yeah, Have and I've had that, too. I've had, like, things fall and, um, you know, when you're acting or, or sorry, when you're on stage or something, or it, it props go awry or awry or, or, anyways, it just basically, you like you said, it makes you so present that you're like, we got to figure out how to get back on track and stay in the, yeah. and I've seen, I've seen actors ad lib Shakespeare, which I think is just, you know, a skill onto its own that if you can, you know, get yourself around that. That's blasphemy. Um, and, yeah, exactly. Um, but again, the, the audience, you know, well, unless it's like a famous speech, you, you can get away with it. But um, also to what, to your point too, that like theater, it's, if you think about how long, I guess with your, the off Broadway story, it might not be the same, but w when I worked at that theater festival, we would have like two months of rehearsal before we had, would put up a show. So every day you're coming in, you're trying something new, you're trying something new. And the only real difference with film is that like we would just shoot it all the time. So like film to me is just a rehearsal. Like once you get there, if you're lucky, which I think, you know, unless you're working on the big budget stuff and you're working with these bigger name directors where, you, where you're allotted a rehearsal, a lot of the time it's like, well, it's just like, throw things around here and maybe we'll maybe something will be great and we'll stick with it or because like I said it, it's, it's a team you do something and you think you know you nailed the scene but then they send the four cuts to the the editor and they Frankenstein it and then it comes back to you and you're like well I didn't think it looked like that and you know or or for the better or you're like I, I pooched it and then it comes back you're like I nailed that scene and it you know it's <laughs> It, yeah. it really is a, a group effort in a lot of this stuff. So.
So yeah. yeah. Have you actually like full on gone up on your lines where you couldn't remember your line on stage during a play? I oh oh yeah. I mean, well, you know what? I've I've had that nightmare many times where you're you you know you're dreaming and then you think all of a sudden you're doing this play and you're like I, I haven't rehearsed and I don't I'm not I don't know all the lines. You're like you gotta go, you gotta go on and it's right here. But and it's it's always Hamlet. It's always Shakespeare. It's always Hamlet. <laughs> and it's I'm about to go up and I literally have the script, the play, and I'm like. Fuck, like what's the, I yeah. really, and then the curtain yeah. opens and like and then I wake up. You're just looking at the skull and you're like, oh, I don't know what to Yeah. Yeah. No, it's I've had I haven't had anything that bad. And I've I've been confident enough that I would just like ad lib around it until we get to some and hope that you know everyone and to, like you know, you're the asshole afterwards. I have to be like, I'm <laughs> sorry guys, I didn't. Um but uh no, I've I've I haven't had any crazy stuff. Like I said, there was one time that something fell and that was a bit of a thing to like get out of it and, and anyways, whatever. So Nina Gree sixteen is asking for us to give us some Shakespeare. Do you have a favorite oh, yeah. oh, Shakespeare I give you line or a little phrase? I can give you a whole soliloquy if you want. I mean, it sticks sticks with you. So, all right, well, here. Wait, do you have something? Because I don't want to steal yours. If you go first. Right. Okay, <laughs> you you give it first. Um, I I have Romeo down, but mm. um, okay. You do it with an English accent. No, I don't want to hear that. I am about <laughs> practice. Um, okay, so Juliet's up there, whatever, right? I'm like, hey. But soft, what lights your under window breaks? It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already pale and sick with grief, that thou her maid art far more fair than she. Oh, be not her maid, since she is envious. Her vest livery is but sick and green, and none but fools do wear it. Cast it off. It is my lady. Oh, it is my love. Oh, that she knew she were. Oh, she speaks. Oh, oh, no, no. Um, I don't know. I lost it. That the was one. Wherein will catch the conscience of the king. Of the king. Oh, yeah, there's your Hamlet. Um, I always wanted to do, maybe one day, to do um, Richard III. I want, when I get older, the whole, uh, what's the opening when it's, um, now is the winter of our discontent, made glorious summer by this son of York, and all the clouds that lowered upon our house in the deep bosom of the ocean buried. Now are our brows bound with victorious wreaths, our Bruised arms hung up for monuments. Our stern alarms changed to merry meetings. Our, uh, our stern alarms changed to merry meetings. Our, to, 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 uh, oh, oh, I got to look at it. It's been a while, but okay. Yeah. Anyway, Kevin. It's up there somewhere. Kevin. Yes. My bounty is as boundless as the sea. My love is deep. The more I give to thee, the more I have for both infinite wow wow i felt that like you were i was just kind okay. of reciting but you were living yeah my I was, god i i think i'm a little like off i need i think i need to rehearse a little bit more but no uh, that's there put it up put it up on its feet wow um shop needed what has been your favorite project you've worked on to date oh man um I, it's, it's a hard thing because I don't have like every one of them has something that, you know, you walk away with, and you're like, oh, it was really cool. I learned how to do this. Right. I, I met this person or, you know, we found this. Um, oh, no, please, Kevin, please, Kevin's Internet. Come back. Come back. Come back. Where now doth Kevin's Internet -eth? where now I can't see it. My true heart, my back. true love. I'm back. Were you, were you? Gary is back. <laughs> you wondering. know what? I was lost, and then I heard your beautiful um, soliloquies or whatever you're doing, and, I, and you, you brought me back around. I'm sorry. I knew it. something was being delivered to the house, and I was like, I, care. I know they're going to call right when we're doing this. Um, anyways, it's being delivered. Uh, I, yeah, I've learned everything. The things that, that I really like, I've some of the indies that I've done where I get to where I've either directed or I've been part of part of really making the whole thing, even if they haven't been seen by a lot of people, I felt the most fulfilled 
because you know you really kind of nurse that baby from its inception um where a lot of the stuff you know you know you're lucky to come aboard you're lucky to kind of you know help out but Mm -hmm. Right now, it's just been indie. I've got a couple other ideas. I'm really trying to get off the ground. But as I've gotten older, I don't know if have you produced anything or have you have you um, you know written anything that is kind of your your baby that you're. So you know, a script is roughly a hundred pages. I've gotten like thirty pages in, and then I I get stuck. So I'm leaving the writing to the experts, but I've <laughs> actually started to produce. Um, I'm actually about to go off and shoot. A, uh, a film that I help I'm helping produce, and then I've got three more that I'm lining up to produce um, in the upcoming year. So I'm starting to get more into that arena, wow. which I love because you know I just got tired of going to these auditions, waiting for other people to choose me for their yeah yeah their projects yeah. and their dreams, and uh, and this is just. You know, it's a way to keep continuing doing what I love. And sometimes in life, if you hit a roadblock, if you're not getting what you want, what I've discovered is that you've got to just create it and find a way around how to make it happen. Um, and that's, you know, I wrote a book a couple of years ago called Agile Artist, and it's all about how to tap into your creativity to produce and manifest the, the things that you really want to have in life. And that's what acting has taught me business in general, in terms of, you know, people will say like, well, I guess it's not meant to be. And it's like, fuck that. If you want it, you got to make it happen. You can't just and hope and pray. You literally, there is a way to make it happen, but you've just got to tap into your resources and, uh, and just kind of step outside of maybe your, what you're accustomed to thinking or, or the way of doing things to actually your comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. Get out of your comfort zone, and uh, and that's definitely like no matter how terrifying it has been, I've always learned something. It's always been incredibly gratifying once you step out into that uh, or step outside of your comfort zone. Yeah, uh, you just grow and you expand. You become like more self confident about what you're doing, and yeah, yeah. I've heard it saying like you can't you can't grow and stay the same. Like it's it's impossible. So like you, you know you're 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 becoming a new person technically when you get out there and you, and, and you're right like how, how does anybody know what you want unless you kind of tell them unless you kind of go for it and show them so yeah. i think that's that's so good and i also like we're in the age where that 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 is the new norm whether people like i mean it'd be so great you know had we have been in this business in the you know early 90s or, or even 80s where it was it was a different business and you know you're trying to get in this this club and if you got in the club and you got to play with the, the toys and the other actors and everything and got to like maybe make a movie. But now like distribution is, is easy to do. Um, it's never been easier to make a movie. I mean, the, what I'm talking to you right now on, it, we, we Soderbergh shot uh, a movie on, you know, an iPhone it's, and like, they're like, what's your excuse at that point? Um, yeah, even, even the handheld, uh, the, what are they called? The go, uh, the go pose. Is the GoPro or the, there's there's a type of um, stabilizer that you can use and and you can get these amazing shots with it and you just, a lot of the, the stars that have come up have were already like doing this especially like Saturday Night Live and things like that like these people making videos on the internet and then getting so many views in in Canada there's a guy Jared Kiso is his name and I think he's like one of the best Canadian actors I think he's really good he did. He's from Lucknow, which is a town that's, uh, I've never met him. So I, I'm not plugging him because I don't know who he, but I, I, I am plugging him. I just don't know who he, um, he was on a show called, um, uh, 19 two or nine. It, it was basically, it was a police drama, but then, you know, and it did okay. And he, he was good in it, but then he, him and his friend wrote these series of, um, kind of comedy country skits called letter Kenny. And then, you know, they added like a million views or whatever. And he was able to take it to a producer and they, you know, gave him some money and then he made a show and now they're doing their seventh season. He's got a new show. Brad Pitt mentioned it at some award thing being like, oh, you're from Canada. I love uh, Letter Kenny show. Like make it yourself right now because it's, it's, yeah. it's never been easier to be seen. Now there's a lot of people trying to be seen right now. So, you know, mm-hmm. you, you got to get in a wave of that, but but it's never been easier to make you work and, and get it, 
you know, in front of eyes. So I think what you're doing is actually the future. Like, I, I think, I think we're lucky when we get asked to be in something and, you know, yeah. do, but it's the most rewarding and fulfilling is, is telling your own story and finding a way to, you know, get that made. So yeah. that's great. Good for you. That's, yeah. Uh, no, it's definitely and congratulations on the book too. I don't know. Like I, I, have you read the artist's way? Uh, I have by Julia Cameron. Yeah. And that's, I mean, yeah. I honestly, most of us don't get past the, um, the morning pages, uh, but I do them, uh, you know, when I, when I need to like, you know, yeah. three pages and you don't pick up your, uh, and the first page for me is always like, what am I doing? I just, I don't know what I'm writing. I can't lift this pen up. And then, you know, around the second page, you kind of start some of your mind drizzles in and then all of a sudden yeah. you're, you're writing stuff. Um, and it, you know, the idea is basically unblock yourself, unblock your, your mm -hmm. inhibitions. Um, so I think that's, that's, that's very generous and, um, uh, I mean, courageous as an artist, but also I think what you writing that book to help other people that that's, um, this is lovely, I guess. Is what I'm well, thank yeah. you. Kevin. And a lot of it is, uh, it's just based on a lot of the, the inner mental work that I've learned that has been the biggest game changer with not only my career, but my life. So in terms of like, like the mental mind game, in terms of staying resilient, uh, staying committed with your eye on the prize, because uh, this business and anything worthwhile in life can be difficult. Um, what do you do to stay focused, to stay grounded, to stay resilient? Do you meditate? Do you do yoga? Yeah. Do you do like inner work to stay grounded with who you are and, and not yes. wait off too far from your goals in life? Yes. I, yeah. I, I do meditate. I do. I've got like a workout program. I, I make sure that I get outside and move my body. Um, I, and, and I can feel when I don't too. I can feel when things are going off. Um, I have a friend, he is a, he's a great writer. Um, but he's also, before he was a writer, he was, uh, he still is, he's a drummer, but he had a band, a jazz band. They put out two seat, uh, two albums, you know, they did okay. Um, but because of that hurt, I think he he kind of didn't pick up the drums for a while. We, you know, we kind of play a little bit. I I, also, I play guitar and I sing and, you know, we jam a couple of times. And and if I could do it again, by the way, I, I definitely make a try at a rock star for a, for a second. It, that's one thing I was like, I should have just given it like a year or two. And, you know, <laughs> um, anyways, next life. But my friend, um, he would get, you know, especially after his books would be out and he's kind of waiting for the next thing or whatever, he'd get really agitated and, and you know, really mad with, you know, life, I guess, and, and certain scenarios in his particular life. And I got another buddy who's 90% of the time he's an idiot. 10% of the time he says really, like, great, smart, um, grounded, <laughs> like, just poetic things. And there's one time he was like, well, that's because he's not feeding his artist. When, when my friend was angry at my other brother, he said, well, he's not feeding his artists. What are you talking about? He's like, well, he's got, he's got several artists in him. And he's, you know, he's put all his energy, all that, you know, if he had a pot of water, he poured all that into the wine glass. Um, and his other artists are, are angry now that they're not getting a chance to express themselves or whatever. And if he was able to do that, you know, it would alleviate some of the pressure, I guess, that he was having as a writer. Like if he was able to just go bang the drums for a little while, or like he needed, he needed another outlet. Um, and I liked that idea that we all have, you know, I'm an actor, but I've also, I've, I've written screenplays, I, I play guitar. And I, I know when I haven't played the guitar for a little while or sang for a little while, I, I feel off or whatever. And I always think oh, I'm not feeding my other artist. And I like that. That yeah, I like that too. And again, ten percent of the time he's smart. Ninety, he's an idiot. But he, he nailed it with that one. And um, and and I I I'm a better artist in in other avenues for you know for for, for giving yeah. every artist in me uh you know uh, uh a chance to come out every now and then, <laughs> I guess. But yeah, feed 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 all your artists is I yeah. Think, is, I love that. I think. Yeah. being well-rounded and just getting out there exploring. And uh, if anyone offers you the opportunity to go see a play, go see a movie, go to a museum, like just get out there. And yeah. that's been the biggest educator for me and the biggest resource for my acting has been just getting out there and having these experiences without any 
attachment to the outcome of it all. Yeah. And I think the older we get, it's so easy to get attached to wanting to make sure that something works out the way it should be. And if it doesn't, we get upset. Yeah. Um, but the I, picture, the picture in our head, right? Like, it's like, why is it not becoming this? And, and you know, the expectations, but you're, you're right. Get out and see the things. And I, I, I right now, the Hollywood reporter or the Hollywood, um, the Hollywood Reporter roundtables, or I, I saw a couple of them or whatever. Yeah. So I saw Michael Keaton kind of talking about his life and, and, and going through certain things in his life and, and remembering them and using them when he, you know, is, is in a scene or, or building a character that uniquely defines that character to him from his experience. And, you know, he always remember what you're doing. Like you said, go see all that stuff and experience the world. And he says he feels that there's a danger right now where you know, nostalgia is kind of the best drug right now. Everybody, everything's being sold on nostalgia. You know, go, go to this. Nostalgia is getting us to the theater. So you look at the top movies. They're, they're movies that we already saw in the 80s or, like, you know, that, that have already. Top Gun Maverick. Maverick. Top Gun Maverick. Or, I mean, Thor, and I want to see them all. Don't get me. I got nothing yeah, against that. Yeah, exactly. But, but, you know, I miss, I also grew up in the, you know, the 90s. And I, I, I remember going to see like movies that, looked good by from the trailer you know like i people were more willing to take a chance on a new idea and you know those hits are what people are just trying to redo now and and i don't think people are out of ideas i i i just think they're not selling or people it's too big a gamble right now to to um put all your money on on an idea that nobody really knows but saying that like mm -hmm. i have you seen everything everywhere all at once no Okay, go. Perfect. If you're gonna take, if you're gonna take, any, if anybody's gonna take anything out of my ramblings, go okay. see everything, everywhere, all at once. It's, uh, I think the Russo brothers produced it, if not directed it, but they teamed up. It's um, Michelle, uh, who was in um, Crouching High Tiger, uh, Hidden Dragon. Um, yeah. Michelle, yeah, Michelle, yeah, and um, it is, it is such a good mind bending movie mm. completely original um you know it, it's like uh who's the korean director to uh um that did parasite like these are the kind of things that we should be putting out that are that are that are changing not only not only new ideas but like they're changing our story formats i remember seeing parasite and i was like when is this thing going to end and also what genre is this like at one point it's a comedy at one point it's kind of uh uh, a horror and then at other points it is it, it's it's like a, a reflection of of or a statement on equality of uh, like economical equality I, mean, and I was just like and, and always entertained and it always looked beautiful um but uh these are the type of things that i get excited about and and like go out and see that stuff you know um it'll make you better like yeah. you, know, you, you just said yeah kind of material is incredibly inspiring and um have you seen the offer which is the making of the Godfather on Paramount? Plus. I have no, but it's that's on my thing, hundred percent. That's uh, yeah. what's his face? I really like uh, who's the, he's from um, Miles Whiplash. Teller. Miles Teller. I really like Miles. So Teller. this is a, an incredible study in how the art of Hollywood or the art of filmmaking it gets um, clashes with the business side of it, where you see the Hollywood executives from Paramount, Gulf Western are trying to make sure that this movie, which is like going off the rails in so many different directions and just how Al Ruddy, who's the producer of the film, was able to, again, rely on his resources, think outside the box and keep this train on the tracks when it should have derailed 400 different times. Um, but you, if you are interested to see kind of the, the behind the scenes, like conversations and the process that goes into making movies, I think you will appreciate the art of TV and filmmaking a lot more and not just discredit or kind of uh, dismiss things that aren't so good because there is so much that goes into any of the things that we create that it's a miracle that any of it even gets made in the first place. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, I'll definitely check it out. I'll, yeah, I get it. Um, it reminds me just kind of what you're saying too. I've heard this story about John Favre who did, uh, you know, Iron Man and Elf and everything. And a skill that he has is what it sounds like what you're kind of t talking about with the producer is 
finding a way to get the money, which is all, you know, get the money from the studios, but then making the studio heads believe that the art, the good artistic ideas are their ideas. So mm -hmm. like, you don't have to, in a way, kind of playing, you know, oh, you're so, you're a great idea. You're so smart or whatever. And like, that's, but then being able to make your own movie. Yes. Cause that's the other thing too. You can't, you know, you can't blame actors sometimes or directors. Like there are so many talking heads that go into a movie and the one that has the most money in it is always the one that's going to be the loudest and they're going to win. So if, if, if you are able, if you're a people person and, you know, and, and an artistic genius at the same time, that's how you get that kind of stuff. You know, that's, a, and I, I've, I've, you know, I haven't seen the offer, like you said, and I will check it out, but even the casting of, of Pacino and Marlon Brando, I've heard all that stuff about all the oh, things yeah. that Francis Ford Coppola had to go through to even get them. The studio did not want El Pacino. No, they, they wanted James Caan. We got, we were like, yeah. and it took them, you know, until the, the 11th hour for them to finally hire Pacino. And then once yeah. they did, he was so nervous on the first few days of set that they almost fired him. I mean, it was like, yeah. yeah. And just to see these actors play these, the, the different characters, these real life characters, Francis Ford Coppola and Marlon Brando, Justin yeah. uh, Chambers. I saw, I, saw the, I saw the Brando scene. He's so good. Dude, he is amazing. Him. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I recommend this thing. Yeah, um, in good. terms of the actors that you've worked with, uh, Miss Joyce Peterson is asking, have you ever fallen for any of your co-stars? Well, I'm dating one of them right now. So, I mean, yes, we share a home. Um, uh, I mean, so the, the movie that I just did, My Grown-Up Christmas List, is with Kayla Wallace, who I met on, uh, on When Calls the Heart. Um, and we've been very happy for, you know, a couple of years. And, okay. and um, yeah, so things are going pretty well with that. Uh, and, you know, to, to answer your question a little bit more on the broad, you know, Kayla's not watching. So um, I <laughs> think, honestly, and I was told this at, at some act, at an acting class that I did once, is one of the first things, a great thing to do, whether it's a guy, girl, whatever, if your scene partner's a male and you're a male or, or the scene partner's a female and you're whatever, is find something you absolutely love about them right away. And when you see them and find something you absolutely hate about them. Don't tell them, like, don't open up and be like, hey, you know, <laughs> you, I hate you or whatever, <laughs> your demeanor. Um, but hold that in and use that, you know, when, when, when you're doing whatever. And I've done it. And like, there are moments where you're like, I'm falling in love with this person. And, you know, and then you go home and, right. you know, it's, it's, it's yeah. a technique and, and it's, it's, you know, it's work. But on the day when you're there, it's like, oh my, I'm kind of fall, or I hate this person's guts or whatever the scene is. But yeah, find something you love about them, find something you hate about them, don't tell them. Exactly, great pieces of advice. And what I've heard from my casting director, or from uh, some of my acting teachers is, um, is everyone has something beautiful about who they are. And it's your job as the actor to find that and shine a spotlight on that because when people see, feel seen for who they are and what they what unique qualities they bring to whether it's a, an acting job or a relationship when people feel seen and heard for who they really are they light up and it's yeah. amazing when people uh when you can tell when someone just feels that you really get them and i think yeah. that's one of the, another one of the uh, another great thing that acting has taught me is that just to like what you were just saying, find something beautiful about someone. But I do like that. Find something that you hate about them. Oh yeah. Don't say anything. Cause that, you know, yes. you're going to use both of them, you know? Yeah. That's great. Exactly. And isn't it always just like what you said with, the, with, the, with your teacher is it's always about like, you can come in. I right now in, in this journey and the chapter, I guess in my, but I'm, I'm very interested in behavior. Like I really like behavior. To, to play around with right now. But when it comes down to being in the scene, it doesn't matter. Like, it's all about all the attention you're going to give somebody else. Like, it, it, like you said, you can't prep anything. Or, I mean, you, you, you do a certain amount of prep, but you can't plan how you're going to say anything because right. when you're there, if you're giving everybody, if you're giving your scene partner 100% of your attention, they are going to affect how you say something. As long as you know that the impulse is going to come out, they're yes. going to change that. And it's, that's really it's such simple stuff. It just takes a long time to get there, but it is just a hundred percent, you know, give your attention to that other person. And, and you see it in auditions too. I, 
you see when people kind of look around and they're like they're, they're looking for the word somewhere else and you just it it stops everything you're like yeah it's not interesting anymore but like when somebody is fully there and i get it's you're nervous and whatever but being connected like you said is always just so much the audience sees that too the audience sees that the other person is being seen and, and that's the reason we all go to we all put ourselves up in one of those characters we're like oh i'm that guy i feel like i'm that guy yeah. you know so well in terms of real life because a lot of us depending on where we're at whether we're at work or in our relationship we act different ways with in different situations that we're in um when it comes to your relationship um and cultivating the success of a relationship what would you say are some key success factors that you've discovered that keep you and your girlfriend together Ooh, um Honesty above all. I mean, I learned that at a young age. Um, yeah, honest. Not that I'm a liar. Honey, do I look fat in these jeans? Do you actually well, tell a woman that well, she looks I mean, fat in jeans, or do you find a way to like you 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 lean into the thing that you're like, no, you are beautiful. You you look. Right. There are many reasons why you look beautiful in these jeans, and I'm not going to say a reason why you don't look good. Um, yeah, it's. I mean, honesty vulnerability it's it's again i mean the, the classic things but i think sometimes they take a long time to get to a place where you know in this particular relationship i'm in i think we both just really feel seen by each other and and like you said you know you you act a certain way in different relationships thinking like this is who you're supposed to be or this is what this is what you're supposed to be and then when you find that relate if you're lucky enough to find that relationship where you just get to be yourself you know completely naked mm -hmm metaphorically and and uh figuratively um sometimes depending on the morning uh you're very lucky like i mean that that that's what makes because you're gonna get it all like you know relationships are hard and 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 they all go through certain strains but vulnerability and honesty are just kind of you know and trust you know trust is a tough thing that when you lose that and i've been in relationships where trust has been broken for a, a plethora of reasons but that's a tough one to, yeah. you know, fix again. And I, I, you know, especially when you get older and you, you see friends that are married and, you know, then, then something happens or whatever, not necessarily somebody leaves, goes outside of the, the marriage, but trust can be broken in other ways. And it's, it's not just like, uh, like, like you got to work to fix that. And, and that's what marriage is too, right? That's, it's, yeah. it's, it's a decision to be with somebody and, and know that you're stronger with this person and, and and you want to get through it. You know, so. you know what your love language is, Kevin? It's fun. You know what? I know what that book is now. I, and I actually, Kayla and I talked about When we were friends, we talked about this. I, I mean, I like physical touch. I, but I, I like words of affirmation. So that makes me shallow. <laughs> um, I like words of affirmation. Um, and. Mine's quality uh, time. What is it? Quality yeah. time. Is quality that's, time? Caleb's is quality time. So that's their yeah. one quality time. I yeah. like it. Too. And again, again, if you haven't read this book or, you know, it's everyone is everything, but you just kind of lean on to, you know, certain points a little bit more. And what's interesting about this book too, is that, you know, you can, somebody who thinks quality time, right? If, if your partner is quality time and your words of affirmation and, you know, you're giving quality time. She's like, well, this is what I want. So I'm sure this is what the other person wants. Right. And the other exactly. person, you know, you have to find, you know, what they want. And, and yeah. yeah, anyways, that, that's, that's a so good book too. That's, it, I mean, it's so simple, but it, it is hard because you want to, you have to fight the urge to, to give love the way that you, you like, that you, that's how you do it. So that's what yeah. you do. And then the other person, person's like, I like, this is not what I want. I like, yeah, no idea. Like, what do you mean? I got you this and I took you here and I did this. And like, all I want you to do is put that goddamn phone down and yeah. listen to me for five yeah, minutes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, in a way I had, so I remember a couple of years ago, whatever, I was seeing this fun therapist and I was trying and I was just kind of lost the time. And I was, I was like, you know, I just want a normal life. Like I just want things normal. And again, and he was like, well, what does that mean? And I was like, well, you know, like how I grew up. And he's like, well, why is that normal? And I was like, I, I don't know. I, you got me. And it's like, it's, 
you you're, you're doing what you think is is normal and you're like this is what i grew up with and this is this right. is how you love somebody or whatever and you know as you get older you have to realize like there is no normal it, 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 there's I don't know. There's, there's comfort and there's, I don't know. I guess there's a new normal. There's mm -hmm. a new normal, but anyway. Yes. I think we could. Also, I noticed you don't have a coffee. I read this coffee with Colin. I was like, I better, that's why I was a little late. I was like, I got to get a coffee because I'm sure he's going to have one. And here I am at I know, six, and I appreciate six that. my time and I'm going to be up and I have this little coffee cup and it's double yeah. espresso and well, you're drinking nothing. I, uh, I've got my water because here at Hollywood. I thought you, I thought you were going to pull a bottle of wine. <laughs> yeah, I wish it was a bottle of wine. Uh, yeah. I'm shooting the show here in Hollywire Studios, which is oh. the normal location where I shoot. So um, they didn't have any coffee here at the studio, unfortunately. I've uh, never heard that sentence before in my life. <laughs> They've never had any coffee at the studio. That's all they have. They just it's get a coffee in like a six-week-old bag of Oreos, and they're like, that, that's crappy. Yeah. I mean, I could probably yeah, scrounge something up around here, but uh, I, I appreciate okay. the spirit and you being a part of that. And uh, I'm drinking a coffee with you in spirit. All right. We'll yeah. add it later in post. You can just like put a thing in there. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. So you've got a uh, – you're starting season 10 of When Calls the Heart. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, for all of your fans out there, uh, can you tell us a little all bit? All four of them. I see all four of them right there. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hey, Peggy, Doug. Kristen and uh, Julie. I don't, yeah, Ju no, one of them's got a weird name. Yeah. Uh, Booster. Um, can you tell us um, how many seasons have you been on the show and what do you love about the show? What can fans look forward to in this upcoming season? Uh, well, you know, I'd love to say what fans can look forward to, this, but I am the last one they tell sometimes. Like, that's one thing I'm not crazy about about serial uh, television is sometimes you get those pages the day before you're ready to shoot them. And, and sometimes you were promised something else and you're like, Oh, this isn't anything what I was, you know, prepared for. Mm -hmm. um, last year, they started kind of branching out in a different way in the show and it's gotten more um, uh, community based. So, I mean, I mean, everybody in the, in the town has like a storyline, which is really nice. Um, I, I've got hopes for where I think my character's going to go, but I mean, I, I definitely don't want to say what I'm looking forward to in case anybody tunes in and be like, this is going to happen, and it, it, it doesn't happen at all. I mean, I've heard some things. Uh, I'm just as you know excited as any fan that wants to see it. I, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, but, so, I mean, that's that. Let's compartmentalize that. I don't know. Um, but to talk, I think the other thing you asked was, what was the other thing you asked? You asked two things there. Well, Emily is asking what, what it's like to play a Mountie. Well, I mean, as a Canadian, that's just like being given the crown of Canada. They're like, here, only it's a Mountie hat <laughs> that, <laughs> that never stays on when you're riding the horse. Uh, you know, it, the surge is itchy and hot in the summertime and thin and cold in the, uh, in the winter. And the jonipers, which are the uh, you know the mounty pants that, that kind of like stick out. First of all, they're tailored to look a little sexier on me. I, they're they're not they're brought in a bit, but they are hell to get on and off the horse because they tightened them. So like the whole reason you wear these jonipers is because you, you know you got baggier thighed uh, uh, muscular pants. Yeah, yeah well, so there's some muscle there. Yeah, it couldn't it couldn't fill the, those original jonipers. But it gives you enough that you can hop and, you know, jump off the horse nice and quick. But now, like, they've got this, like, skin-tight jonoper on me, and I've got to, like, get on the horse sometimes. And, and the horse, because I'm 6'3", the horse I have is, like, 9 feet tall, so I look normal. So, you know, it's okay to answer your question. Last year, they really let me um, – the, last year, the, the, the idea was, you know, he gets – he ends up getting – okay, let me set this up here. In season eight – he gets his heart broken and then in season nine they hit him with a car uh so he kind of like starts right at the at the bottom and he kind of builds himself up into this kind of new character um so that that it, it was kind of a build-up season for me last year that ended with me chasing down a bad guy on the horse and doing the john wayne um or the arnold schwarzenegger um 
gun flip when he's so I'm like I'm, I'm riding the horse with my you know left has got the reins and I'm doing the gun flip with a rifle on on the right like I'll shoot I'll miss him and then I'll do the the spin cock and that was pretty badass that was um at a good time that that day and I got to add a couple more I was like you yeah. know I ended up like shooting the guy and I shoot his hand and he's got he, which I think is the first time at Hallmark anybody's ever blown off a guy's hand um and he he he's forced to pull over and then i i ride up to him and i do the spin cock again i'm like get out of the car and that was the most fun i got to have so i hope i get a bit more mounty action i was told our old showrunner was trying to get me to do like a horse jump where the horse and i have to like get in some precarious situation where we have to like jump into the water together um i assume i'm on top and be weird if i was pulling with the reins but and, and we're like both in the water it, it, building a building a trust with his horse um but as i to go back to what the, the question was as a canadian i feel you know it, it's pretty nice there's only a handful of actors i know they got to play uh that are canadian they get to play a mountie and it's mounties is such like an iconic in canada they're an iconic thing and it's 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 a rare you know thing so it's it's um i have a lot of fun with it you know and i get to i make him a little different i don't i don't like them to be so stern so they let me kind of goof around a bit sometimes so. that's good we've got a ton of fans here because oh I'm more than the four that it, elizabeth smith says that was the best scene of the season uh thank you elizabeth we've uh niner girl six i think that's what it is uh says that was yeah. pretty badass um, I think you got a, a lot of fans here, Kevin. And, oh, well, thank you for the fans that are watching right now. And you've guys. got a new fan over here in Los Angeles because uh, uh, I love you, and I appreciate your time. Uh, it's come that time of the show, though, where I get to ask you your favorite movie recommendations for everyone out there who's looking for some good stuff to watch. So are you ready? Uh, okay. Yes, I'm ready. All right. All right. First question is, what is your favorite movie of all time? Oh, I, I have such a hard time with this question because I, I don't, it changes so often. Um, I grew up on the 90s dumb comedy. I grew up on the Jim Carrey. I grew up on the, the Chris Farley. I have a soft spot for like the Will Ferrell. Um, that's my go-to when I'm sick. But as I have gotten older, I appreciate, you know, the, the, like uh, the, the, bend, the, the, the mind bending, the genre bending stuff. You know, with a, a great movie right now that I, I just, just thinking about because Miles Teller, um, Whiplash was one of the ones that I, I walked out and I think it's such a great movie on what it takes to be great and the price that it takes. And as I get older, I think of everything once you hit a certain age costs something and you have to be like, am I willing to pay the price on this? And I thought that movie, you know, whether he paid the price and wh whether it was like the right choice or not at the end, that's to be debated, and which all makes a great movie that at the end of the the end of the movie just kind of gives you the thing, but doesn't, you know, like, it's not like a happy ending. It's just, it's just like, did he make the right choice? Was this worth it? I don't know. Would yeah. it be worth it for you to, to give up everything you have to be the greatest? I don't know. But it was, um, that was one that kind of resonated with me. So. Yeah. That scene where JK Simmons is instructor. Oh yeah. Yeah. Nope. Again, not, not nope. quite my tempo. Not, not, not quite my tempo. Not, Again. not quite my tempo. And then he throws the Again. symbol at his head. Yeah. He throws the fucking drums at yeah. him. It's like, yeah, it's, it really, that movie's all about what it, like you said, it really makes you realize um, what you're, what you are willing to do to get what you want in life. And man, I'm telling you, we, I think we've all faced some roadblocks and some, crappy things in life. And the biggest lesson that I have learned from all of it is just putting one foot in front of the other, even if it's just like one little micro step in front of the other, totally keep heading in that direction. And before you know it, you're going to look back and you will realize that you've walked 40 miles when you thought you yeah. were walking 40 feet. But, but without like, it, that doesn't come without its cost. Right. And in those 40 miles, what did you leave behind? What did you, what, what baggage did you have to get rid of that might've also been for the better? I don't, cause that was, you know, he loses his girlfriend, yes. he loses, he gets a bad relationship with his parents over that. He becomes the best at the end. 
but like you know or i i mean again to what what is greatness cost is yes. the, is, is the question of that movie and at the end of it 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 really just asks you is it worth it was it was it worth it and yeah. i hope what's important if you're going to walk those 40 steps and those 40 miles or whatever to, to the goal you know make sure it's what you want because if you get up there and you're like i did it and i really missed a lot of stuff back there that i that i wish i kind of focused on or whatever that I, so i mean everything costs something and i really like that idea that it's it's you know yeah everything yeah. costs something and being aware of what you are sacrificing and giving up going after that success yeah finding yeah. that balance in life i think is is what a lot of people you know are striving for not exactly. always exactly yeah not yeah. always easy it's never easy i mean and that that's that's it everybody loses something to get something so yeah exactly. I, hope, I hope it's the, i hope it's the thing that they want you know it's worth it i hope it's worth it at the end of the day yeah, so, yeah. uh second question what was your favorite movie growing up as a kid well, so I've got to go back to this. I mean, this was actually, you know what it was? Christopher Reeve and Superman. We uh, actually going back a bit more, Helen Slater in Supergirl, my brother and I. So, I mean, and Supergirl's not a great movie. It is, it, it, it's a B movie. It, what, you know, it, it didn't do what it was trying to be. I love Christopher Reeve, Superman. I'm a uh, huge Christopher Reeve fan. And, the, and the, you know, that's still my favorite Superman. The, the John Williams score, everything about it was. I remember just being wowed. The beginning with the, the like the Richard Donner cut when they've got the like you're going through space, and he's got those like those explosions kind of coming, and you know it's got Marlon Br it's showing everything. Yeah. Um, that's a great movie too to look at, like the offer like showing all the crap that Richard Donner had to go through to get that thing made, and especially bringing on Marlon Brando for like I think he made like three million for the day. Um, and they were holding the signs up for him to say, yes. so like, yes. it's great. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So good. And, but to go back even younger, I think what we were, I think because my parents had super girl on tape with Helen Slater, which, you know, was not a great movie, but we used to, when we were kids and I'm talking like four or five, we would take like our jogging pants off and put them on our head for like long hair. And then we'd have like our little Superman capes and we'd, and my mom, my dad was always like, oh, there's my two super girls. <laughs> But, um, which is great too. Um, but I, I remember the, the feeling of like listening to that John Williams score in, in, yeah. uh, in Superman, Chris Free Superman. That'll yeah. still do it. Like I'll still watch that. And I know it's a little dated and whatever, but it is, I still really like it. And Gene Hackman as, as oh, Lex Luthor, like yeah. God, Gene Hackman's so good. That's a, yeah, yeah. We'll be studying Gene Hackman's movies. Is it Margot Kidder, who is- Margot K Canadian. Yeah. Um, as as Lois Lane, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So good. Awesome. Uh, what was your favorite movie, or what's your favorite comedy of all time? Oh man, I mean, <sighs> it's tough. Like Dumb and Dumber. I, that is well done. I mean, Dumb and Dumber is great. We, we, I mean, we put on um, Step Brothers the other day. We were oh, <laughs> Step Brothers, and it is just so. Are we best so friends stupid. now? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Are we best? We just become best friends. Yep. <laughs> um, yes. I I get a soft spot. Well, last time we were in LA later this earlier this year, we saw um, Will Ferrell do um, uh, Anchorman at the at Largo. Like he came in and did. I guess he's got a podcast where he's an Anchorman. Yeah. So we watched a live oh, version yeah. of that, and I was like, I was three seats away from. Ron Burgundy and I was like, this is pretty amazing. That's amazing. So, yeah, but to say, I mean, you know, comedy movies. I I, I really like the early like Bill Murray stuff was really. I remember laughing in Ghostbusters and and like you know, what's that one Scrooge that he was into? Like there was, yeah. I really like that Cat yeah, Caddyshack. You know, there was a lot of the Saturday Night Live people really were just you know really great. So yeah. Um, how about what's your favorite romantic comedy? Um, I'm gonna say, and I think it's the best one. I, I think it's the best romantic comedy I've seen. The, the most fleshed out Silver Linings Playbook mm. um, with uh, Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence. I mean, mm. in my heart, I and I, I and I would love. I just don't know how you do this with a low budget for like Hallmark, but 
My best friend's wedding also is like just pure nineties oh, yeah. perfection of, yeah. of rom com. Or even Jerry Maguire, I think, is such a great um yeah. rom com. And that's is, is that Cameron Crowe or David O. Russell? David o. Russell did Cameron Crow. Um so Cameron Crowe did Jerry Maguire and David o. Russell did uh Silver Lines Playbook. Um but I thought Silver Lines Playbook was a great kind of bridge into what what we could be doing now with um with uh, uh romantic comedies yeah. um but yeah you want to go to that sweet spot that uh, you know julia roberts and the, it or or i mean even again tom cruise and in, in, in um jerry mcguire with renee yeah. Zellweger. like that was really and the and the bruce springsteen song and yeah and the, at the when he comes in at the end they're all having the women's uh, looking, we don't need I'm men my, he's i'm looking for my wife i'm looking for my wife tonight tonight we had a big night a very <laughs> very big night big night and it wasn't complete without you. Oh, it was just so. Or even like even, even Cuba Gooding Jr. Yeah, <laughs> Cuba Gooding Jr. Where they like they're hugging and the like just sticking. Because you think of it, it's a love movie for two. I mean, for the Nasal Wager for sure. For like you know the yeah. the, the, well, the, Cuba. the but yeah. but Cuba Gooding Jr. and him like staying with the one, you know, the one guy that didn't leave you. You know, I'll I'll make your. I'll make your. I'll, I'll give myself to you and 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 make sure. And it's just such a great. Movie. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations! You're still my agent. <laughs> yeah, you're still. And he loses there, and he's just like watching the all everything go off, like the, all the lights go off. So right. good, so good. Yeah, so good. Um, who is your favorite actor or male character in movie or TV show? Again, you know that depends where I am, and I'm right now. I am, you know, I've been watching a bunch, of, like, I've been really fascinated with, like, Jack Nicholson lately. That, like, again, I'm talking more when I was saying it earlier to you about behavior. Um, he said he was just very interested in behavior. And you look at how, I mean, I think he was amazing in a lot of stuff that he did, of course. And I think he's a great actor. Um, but he was a guy that would, like, lean into these certain behaviors with these characters where I think, you know, he really... I mean, even as good as it gets, like to pull that off, it's, I really like him right now. Again, Bill Murray, I think is, is another person that has just found a way to, I, I like that in Bill Murray's movies that he's, he's always kind of like looking at the camera to be like, isn't this stupid? Like, uh, you know, he's, he's half in the movie and also half like, what yeah. if like, Ghostbusters is a great, and he's like, what a, what a, what a weird, weird world we're all in right now. Yeah. Um, just but again, watch just Wes Anderson movie. And... Yeah, or any Wes Anderson movie. Yeah. He's, you know, great. Uh, and actually, just even saying Gene Hackman, amazing, amazing. Like, yeah, I, it, it, they go. I, I'm amazed at the last the last one I was amazed at for, for a guy was um, we saw Elvis with uh, Austin Butler, and I was like, that guy was nailed it, it. Yeah, it was so. I mean, he and I, I remember reading this in in or seeing it in an interview or whatever, but like with so many Elvis impersonators out there, what a, what a task to be like, I know yeah. become him. And you know, he, because he's, he's younger. So it, it's, it's quite the span of his life near the end. You can tell like he's a young guy kind of, uh, you know, playing a 40 year old or 45 year old, but at, at the, like this, the comeback, the 68 comeback with Elvis, there are scenes where you're like, that's, that's Elvis. Like that is, he is just, he nailed. He's so far this year. I was like, yeah, that guy. He, he's. That, I mean, I'm ama I'm easily amazed. So, I, <laughs> not to take anything away from him, but yeah. I just, you know, we'll we'll go to a movie and I'm just, you know, it's he's yeah. he's got the check right now. But ask me in you know two weeks when I see some other stuff, I'd be like, oh, you got to check out so and so. Yeah, I definitely want to check it out. And lastly, who is your favorite actress or female character in a film or TV show? Oh, God. Okay, I mean the word Kate. Uh, Kate Blanchett, I think, oh, yeah. is incredible. Yeah. Um. You know, I remember seeing her. It was what was it with Judy Dench, who's also incredible, but where she plays the teacher who ends up having an affair with a kid, and then Judy Dench finds out. Or whatever. I was like, who is this? Well, that was the first Kate Blanchett movie I saw, and mm -hmm. then I saw Blue Jasmine, and um. I don't know if we see. There was the one with Bradley Cooper. Elizabeth. Anyway, Queen Elizabeth. With, Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Amazing. Or actually, and you know, the last really, 
not the last one that just came to mind right now is uh, Olivia Coleman in um, The Other Sister. Okay. There's a scene where she's kind of watching. Have you seen The Other Sister? I have. Is it, is it, is it The Other Sister? No, it's called. It's it's where she plays the queen and she's like having an affair with one of the her her like servant or her her maid or whatever and okay. she's watching her maid dance with this guy and it's it's a slow pan in of her like having a good time like just watching it like slowly getting jealous and they the pan in has to be about a minute and I remember and she won the Oscar and I was like that's the reason she won the Oscar right there. it is. Just go, just watch the pan. If, if, if you're going to YouTube anything, you should watch Olivia Colman pan um, or whatever. I forget what the movie is called. The other, uh, the other stuff. No, it's not the queen. No. Anyway. Yeah. Well, she's amazing. I don't know, but it, she's amazing. Have you seen the crown? Uh, no, I haven't, but I was going to see what I saw. I, I mean, I hear the crown. Incredible. Yeah. Um, uh, what was, I, I was really into um, Phoebe, um, uh, blah, 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 blah. She she wrote and directed. What's the uh, what's that one we watched with uh, Lydia Coleman as the mom? Phoebe. No. Oh, so uh, we're just going down. The it's a uh, flea bag. Flea oh. bag. Um, and uh, the the girl like uh, I forget her because she's is it the other her name Phoebe? Oh, no, that's a different th thing. That's why I was thinking it's not the other okay. boiling girl. It's it's got something. Um, but um, Fleabag is incredible. And that like to if you want to be inspired for all the stuff you're doing right now, that was a fringe show that uh, Phoebe, whatever her name is, um, wrote. And Amazon saw it and was like, oh, we'll give you money to make this show. And she writes, she stars. I don't know if she directs, but she definitely produces. Um, and then she's like doing plays as well. And I, I think. Last I last I read in some like celebrity magazine, her and Martin McDonough were together. So like he's off doing stuff like power couple. What, Frid Phoebe Bridgewater, Phoebe, I don't know, but she is Phoebe Waller she's Bridge. Too. Phoebe Waller Bridge. Thank is, you, Stephanie Long. <laughs> thank you, Stephanie Long. Oh man, the power of the Oracle. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, what is it called? The Favorite. The the movie is called The Favorite with a. Thank you, Kayla. <laughs> thank you, Kayla. <laughs> yeah. um, well, Kevin, thank you so much for being here again. And uh, before we wrap up here, um, I just ask, like to ask a couple more questions. What advice would you give your younger self or anyone else out there mm -hmm. struggling with trying to find purpose in life, trying to follow their passion in life, regardless if it's acting or entertainment, but just what they, what they're passionate about just finding what that is. Well, cool. um, yeah, I, I guess I would say, I mean, I would say that your voice is just as important as anybody else's. And you've got, if you have something to say, if you really have something to say, there'll be ears that want to listen to it. And, you know, like you said, you know, put one foot in front of the other and stay focused. You know, it's okay not to be liked by everybody, which is, that's another lesson. To, uh, it's good to learn later. You know, it's okay not to be like, it's, it's, it is an insane idea to be liked by everybody. Yeah. Somebody once said, if you're liked by everybody, you're loved by no one. If somebody loves you that somebody else has to hate you. So, I mean, I, I like I'd say that, but that is a good one. If yeah, if you're like, yeah. um, yeah. but yeah, I, I mean, you, your voice is worth listening to, or, you know, your, yeah, I don't know, whatever, yeah, play back that, something, but, oh, great. yeah. I appreciate the answer. And lastly, besides Kayla, who or what inspires you in life? Well, or besides you Kayla, <laughs> besides Kayla, um, who is a big part That's of it. Answer. Um, no, I, well, I, I mean, she's, she's a big part of it. But other than that, I, you know, I, what inspires me in life is just, I guess, to be better, you know, I, I to not only be better, you know, in my profession, but to be better, uh, to be a better person, to, to make sure that there, when I'm gone, that there's something still around that I did that, that mattered, you know, and I think that changes 
a lot. It might not be like, you know, a movie that somebody likes, but maybe like, uh, I hope, yeah. I, what inspires me is, is, is to work towards something that, that I can leave behind that, that matters, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Is that, that's yeah. pretty. I, no, it's great. Okay. Well, you, you've been leaving a great body of work that is <laughs> and watched by so many people and you have a movie that premiered this past weekend we on the did, yeah. And uh, my grown up Christmas, does that sound? My like grown up that? Christmas list, which is perhaps, you know, the Amy Grant song. Uh, do you remember when da di da di da? You know that song? Uh, you know I'm it? sure if I heard it, I would I would know it. It's uh, you. You'd probably. It's anyways. It was they got the rights to it. And they kind of wrote this song, or, or they wrote this movie around it. But yeah, that that my grown up Christmas list is the Amy Grant song that uh, became. The, All right, movie. So this is part of Hallmark's Christmas in July, and yeah. it's going to be yeah. re airing. It a- it'll be on. Every five minutes. I don't know how they play those yeah. things, but it already aired and I'm sure it'll air again. And you know, awesome. if not, call your friend. Maybe they bootlegged it. So check it out. All right. Well, good luck with filming season 10 of Wind Calls the Heart. Thank and, you. Uh, good luck with all the rest of your projects. And thank you so much for being here tonight. Really appreciate it. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for asking me, Colin. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. And thanks, Kayla, for letting us borrow Kevin for an hour. Uh, she says, I, she says I can go longer if you want. Um, another hour? Oh, another hour. If you want. Yeah. <laughs> no, I All think right. you should go cook her dinner. So yeah, I'll, I'll do let you like know. That. All, All right. right. Thank you so much. Take care, man. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for being a part of season four of Coffee with Colin. We are going to be coming back with the next season coming up in September. In the meantime, I'm going to be working on my next film project and preparing to produce a few other projects as well. Uh, What a great interview tonight. Um, Definitely an awesome guy. I would highly recommend checking out all of Kevin's movie recommendations and of course his own projects. And of course my grown up Christmas list, which aired this past weekend, which is gonna be rerunning on Hallmark. Uh, I wanna say thank you to everyone who came to the Rama Drama Conference two weeks ago down in West Palm Beach, Florida. We are going to be doing the next Rama Drama Uh, I think around November. So stay tuned for time and location for that. It was an amazing weekend where we got to uh, all hang out a bunch of different actors from Hallmark, Lifetime, GAC, and a bunch of other uh, networks and films. And uh, it was an amazing opportunity to just meet and hang out, take pictures. And uh, it was a great opportunity to meet some new friends as well. And I uh, can't wait to announce that I'm going to be uh, doing a couple of collaborations with some of the people that I met at Rama Drama. So you definitely have to come to the next one. And of course, on September 24th, we are doing our Inspire and R3 Stem Cell Health and Wellness Summit. So we're going to be having an amazing day of not only the, the event is going to be held at a winery in Temecula, California. So if you like wine, and you want to hear about health and wellness, this is going to be an incredible and fun, amazing weekend. Uh, So stay tuned for that. We're going to be announcing how to uh, get tickets for that. And I just want to say thank you again for everyone who showed up this past season and the previous seasons, and looking forward to seeing you guys all on season five of Coffee with Colin. And uh, again, I know we're all dealing with a lot of different stuff out there. And the reason why I'm doing this And putting all of this content out there is to just keep encouraging you to go after what really matters to you, what inspires you to listen to your heart. And uh, I love that quote that Kevin said that if you try to be liked by everyone, you're not going to be loved by anyone. So just keep going out there. Stay true to your heart. Know that you're not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but it doesn't matter because if you go out there and stay true to yourself and focus on the things that truly matter to you. I promise you, you will find your tribe, you will find your person, you will find the people in your life that will support you in accomplishing your biggest dreams and your biggest goals, but you gotta get out of your comfort zone. Just get out, get out, get out, get out, stop staying stuck. And if you need a little help, I'm gonna be doing my next Inspire course in the fall. Uh, This is a six week amazing goal setting course where we all jump on Zoom every week. We do a live group coaching call on Sundays. And um, I would highly encourage you to pick up my book, Agile Artist, if you haven't yet. 
a lot of really great stuff that I've learned from amazing acting teachers, life coaches, and uh, so many other people on my journey pursuing what matters most to me. So that's it for now, ladies and gents. Tuning out from Venice, California, here at the Hollywire Studios. Thank you for just being here. Thank you for all of your support. And uh, can't wait to see you guys sometime soon.